And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game called Battle Kittens. This is from um, Up Your Game, which is a division from Ultra Pro Entertainment. It's uh, the kit, the fighting is fast and furry. Furry is, all right, I hate cat puns. I hate puns and I hate cat puns, but it's a, this is, uh, you know how the zombies are out? There's a lot of games now about cats. Well, here's another one where you are going to be drafting cards, which is something I do like, to get cats that have different stats, and then sending them out to battle, to fight everyone else, basically to control an area. In a sense, it has a little bit of the same feeling as Smash Up to some degree, but with cats. Let me show you. going to revolve around a bunch of kittens and so you can see here uh, Momo, Buttercup, Tally, Tut, Pierce and each of these kittens has four different stats. They have strength, agility, wisdom, and cuteness and their stats are going to be from zero to three. Some of the cats also will have some special abilities uh, indicated by icons down at the bottom. And so you're going to be playing this game in three rounds. And in each round, you're going to put out three battlegrounds. Here we have the arena, catacombs, and a face down one. You're also going to shuffle the four attribute cards and put two face up. So wit, agility, wisdom, we don't know what that one is yet. When you look at a battleground, you're going to see that whoever's the best at that battleground is going to get a certain number of points. So in the catacombs, it's two for first place, three for second, one for first. But usually the first place is going to get the most points. Now, the way players are going to do this is each round of the game, you're going to be dealt seven cards. And you're going to take these cards, look through them, pick one, I might keep Mr. Fancy here, and then pass the rest to the person to your left. And you keep doing that to everyone has seven cards. Players are then going to divide their cards into groups and be sending them to the different arenas. Um, so after that happens, you'll reveal the different cats at the arena, and this one, for example, is agility. We'll look at my agility here, and it is five, and whoever has the highest agility gets first place, second place, and third place. Now I mentioned that some of the cats have special abilities, and that's going to affect what happens at each one. If you have a cat with yarn on it, you will draw another cat from the deck and add it. Hey, it's another one agility. If you have a cat with a flag on it, they're a leader, and they get plus one for each cat, other cat that has that same background. So this one's yellow. If there's no other yellow cats, it's not gonna do anything good. Here's one with a red flag. He would get plus one for this guy because they both have red background. Then there's the chain. That simply means you break a tie if there is one. And then there's the crown. A crown, what the crown does, it lets you draw a king card. You don't have to draw a crown card when you play one of these, but these are going to be different cards. Uh, some of them are great. Four of them, there's seven cards, four are great. Double your stats, gain a fish, which is a point, plus one all stats for this kitten, draw a kitten from the top of the kitten deck, add it to the squad. One is kind of neutral, where you replace your squad of cats with the same number of kittens, so you're replacing them, that could be good or bad, and two are bad. Minus one to all your stats, and remove all but this kitten from your squad at this battleground. So you're taking a chance when you draw one of these, but it can change how things work. Um, and that's pretty much it. There's fish that are gonna be given to the winner of each round. Uh, this one here is revealed before you put the cats down. So we would notice is the harbor, three for first, three for second, and it's strength. But it's not revealed until after the drafting has occurred. So when you're drafting, you might be trying, you know that agility and wisdom are here. You don't know if strength or cuteness is the fourth stat that you're going to need or not. Everything's discarded, three new other placed out. The attributes are placed out again. You draft seven more cards and you keep going. After three rounds, whoever has the most fish is the winner of the game. So all the cards, the icons are each a different color and a different symbol. And I think that makes it very easy to tell them apart. The cats themselves, I really do like the artwork on the cats. Um, it's kind of a cute little comic-y type artwork, but it works for this situation. And the cats are not that complicated. You see what color their background is, yeah, which matters for the flags. You see what their, their stats are. 
and any special abilities down there, and the game comes with a reference card for each player that easily tells you what the special abilities do. The fish themselves are fine. You got one in five tokens. It's a little weird that the fish look a little different, but it is what it is. The only thing I have a complaint about component-wise is the rule book itself. The rule book is very dry. It's a little, there's no pictures in it or anything. It's really trying, they tried to condense it down to a few pages. And they have some Q&A, which is interesting, and some uh, variants, some team variants and all. But the whole thing just, I don't know. It didn't give me really many problems, but didn't really make me, I, I, I thought the rule book could have been better. But anyway, let's go to final thoughts. Now, Battle Cats is a really simple game. You're just drafting, and the drafting... <sighs> drafting is a game... It, it, when you draft cards and you take one and keep it and pass them around, usually there's a lot of tough decisions to make. In this game, it's not quite so difficult. You're like, oh, those are the two stats. I'll take the high cards of those stats. Or maybe I'll take a stat of one of the other two ones that's high and hopefully that's the one that shows up or I'll pick special abilities but there are some cats that are clearly better than others so it's not necessarily a difficult draft you'd be like oh I'll take this one and pass it around usually you don't have any kind of that agonizing oh I want all these cards nah you figure there's more good cats coming your way the special abilities are really nice they're all very simple the plus ones maybe the most complex one but not really and they show a little flag and each of the colors has a different background uh, mesh to it too, so that if you're colorblind, you can still tell the difference between them. The draw an extra cat, that's always that's usually going to be good for you to draw an extra cat. The win ties is useful, and then that crown one is intriguing because you don't know which of those seven cards you're going to get at any given point. So you're kind it's it, 40 per, four out of seven is good, and so that's not bad odds, uh, but it also could be bad odds. So I like that. The victory points themselves for first, second, third place. It's a really quick game. You draft, 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 play your cards. Now, the biggest problem with the game is deciding where to put your cats. In a four-player game, we can put our cats at each of the corners of the different locations. With six players, that suddenly gets a little messier. So you put them in front of yourself in pile one, pile two, pile three. Also, in six-player game, you might end up with no points because you might get beat at every location. And you have to decide when you're sending your cats out. Am I sending them all to one location or the other? I almost wish each player had a little mat in front of them that had numbers one, two, and three, and you just put all your cats on those mats and then reveal them all at the same time. I think that would be an easier way to have done it. it might have, I think they could have even fit that in the box. But other than that, it's still entertaining. It's fun. It's another drafting game. I think people are going to like it, and it's easy for kids to get into. And if you like the idea of kittens running around and stabbing each other with swords, this is the game. It's not gory at all. But if they just like the idea of cats and so on, that's for you. Battle kittens. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door!